What is going on, entertain? So, time comes out with another video. We talk in love and hip hop. I forget the episode number, so who gives a crap? Anyways, <laughs> the episode opens up with we end up seeing Jessica invite Shakana out to like this farm. Jessica, how what you doing here? Like, Jessica's to me purpose on this show is like non existent. But I kind of see why they have her on here. Because she's willing to say what the other girlies are not willing to say, especially to jock wife Kendra, okay? She said, you need to divorce Jaseel. Like, she was outright with it and kind of said it and wasn't scared to say it, which made me happy because at the end of the day, somebody needs to be honest with Kendra. So if it has to be Jessica and her wacky ass, let her do it, right? So she's there at this bar with this country white man. I was scared for Jessica's safety. Okay, because he gives very much red hat. So I was like, Ugh, Jessica, you're there by yourself. Thank God production is there. You feel me? Like, oh, I don't know about this. So she's worried about the apocalypse. This is the weird stuff that I've been talking about with Jessica. Apocalypse where? What? Like, the apocalypse is inflation. That's what that is. Ain't about zombies, nigga. The zombies is the nigga that might get elected. That's the zombie. I don't know what apocalypse she's talking about. Like, it was a little wacky for me. It was given very much, I love New York, when New York went to a barn and was working at a barn. It was given a little bit of that, um, to be honest. Uh, nonetheless, it still was a funny scene because they made that white farmer very uncomfortable. So Jessica says she's a fast learner. She learns how to do everything quick. Sucking cock and a whole lot of other stuff. You did not have to say that in front of that white man. You made this nigga feel very uncomfortable. Like, that was a little bit inappropriate. That was very inappropriate. That man had to walk away. <laughs> He's like, you nigger woman was crazy. Okay, he got up out of there quick. <laughs> he said, and he would not appreciate this. That man got up and got out of there, okay? He, she said, no need uh, to be offended, sir. I didn't mean to say that to you. I'm sorry, okay? Why would you do that? Like, for real, for real. Now, next we see um, Saucy Santana performing at Baltimore Pride. So he's shaking his big Debbie case. He booty, 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 booty. Next thing you know, he touches booty and feels some maze. Y'all, they bear mace the nigga. I'm talking about like bear mace freaking everywhere. Bear mace was spreaded everywhere and it was so like fumed up that they didn't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> he got the, he had to get the out of there. Now I know I remember on the blog somebody either shooting or putting mace or something. And I knew I was right because now we've seen it. It was in Baltimore. Um, I will say though, Saucy is right. Because the last thing we need is for us to be deemed as dangerous. They already hate us because we're... So imagine uh, imagine them deeming us as dangerous. That's a little step further than what we're already, you know, labeled as. So he did have a good point of mentioning that. So he got up out of there before things got crucial, okay? The next day, he's FaceTiming his mom, and the mom said that was the most, you know, traumatic thing ever. Because not only it was a whole lot of mace, it was a whole lot of pounds with their booties out, okay? You know the mom is a good Christian woman, so like seeing all of that was probably traumatizing just as much as the mace. I love the relationship, by the way. Like, this is such a good storyline, in my opinion, because it's something that is fresh, it's something that is new, and it's something that's positive. Although the drama in the key is, uh, you know, ha ha ha, we need stuff like this, because it shows at least a positive side of the whole community. So I really appreciate that Saucy brought his mom throughout this whole season because it's needed, okay? Because everybody has this assumption that like every kid is just thrown out their house. They're not like, their family, you know, bans them and all this crap. So it was very nice to see. So shout out to, um, you know, Saucy for that. She's FaceTiming, uh, Saucy FaceTimes the mom lets them know they're going to like a safe haven later on. So Chaotic and Scrappy, Mandisis and Kirk have, instead of the meeting of the moms, inspired by, you know, <laughs> Jock Baby Mama, we have the meeting of the dads with Chaotic, Scrappy, 
uh, Mandisi and Kirk, okay? So they have this event dedicated to fatherhood, et cetera. So they start coming together. They start basically gossiping about Jasmine. So Kirk says he deleted this text thread because he doesn't like negativity in his phone. If that's the case, you would delete every social media app in existence. Nigga, shut up. Like, it's the fact that he thinks people are buying this is crazy. Like, who just deletes them because they feel it's negative and they don't want them on my phone? It's called block, nigga. Who's going to take their time out of their day to delete it? Like, no. You're going to block the person. That's it. So you don't get more negativity. You don't delete it. You have it there. Nobody cares that much to delete something. If anything, they want to keep it so they could throw it back in your face in case you try some funny-ish. Like, it's the cap for me. And Kirk, you can't even wear a cap because your head's too big. Like, it's just like, ugh, it's out of line. It's out of line. So Kirk, at this point, says, no, nah, she wasn't just talking about me. She was talking about you too, Mandisi. So Mandisi was like, wait, what? I don't even know her. I don't even know the baby. So, like, how she get my name up in this? Like, that's crazy. Not going to lie, I went to the bar one time, and I never went back. So uh, Scrappy's like, where's your ring? He said he lost it in the house, and he can't find it. Child just like he can't find the loyalty to Yandy. Child, it's so funny. Like, next episode, Zell is going to clock Yandy's teeth so hard. <laughs> Yandy thought shit was sweet, girl. She said, I Zell say, uh-uh, I don't think you should be laughing. You standing over there uh, with your man doing stuff. <laughs> Shout out to Zell for that, because you really clocked that teeth. You couldn't even say nothing after that, Yandy. You, you just had to sit there and eat your lunch. Like, you, <laughs> just eat your lunch. Like, you couldn't really do much, because he clocked you quick. Okay? So, Mandisi said he went there, seen her, and found out who she was, and never came back. And... This whole wedding ring and not finding it, to me, that's a big red flag. If you're not willing to find your wedding ring to sort of prove that this marriage is solid, especially out to the public, to people that may not know you, that's very suspicious to me. It kind of shows people that uh, you're open and willing and ready. You know how the song goes, with arms wide open, nigga, you legs wide open for some dick to be given out to girls. Like, that's how I see it. Now, Santana and his mom go to uh, the Safe Haven event. Uh, like a, It was like a community center that helps like, LGBTQ people that may be going through things or whatever. And it was sort of nice to hear like all of the people's story. The one that got me was the trade. I said, wow. They had all different kinds. You know what I'm saying? They had the T-Girl, uh, the queen, uh, the femme queen. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The bitch queen. And then you got the trade. The trade was sitting there. He's like, yeah, like, man, like. They helped me out. I was selling dope and some old shit, you know. I had them bottles bent over. Like, it was just really nice to hear some of the stories. Um, I will say that. Like, I'm just, I love the storyline because it's it's positive. It really is. Now, Jaseel and Kendra have the shortest scene that I've ever seen on Love Hip Hop. This game's so set up. They literally had a scene of just them arguing. Jock is getting screamed at by Kendra. Kendra's just like, yeah, why was you in her face? Say that it was appropriate. Say that. Because apparently Jock basically was getting screamed at by this lady who is a friend of uh, Jock and was let into an arena, uh, into an event that Jock was, I guess, curating an event and, and started and was not let into. And she felt betrayed or whatever, right? And the girl got all up in Jock's grill and boop, 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 and did one of these. So she felt like it was inappropriate uh, to do that, okay? So, but my whole thing is, Kendra, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. At all. So you're just going to be like Rashida. Because if you were going anywhere, you would have been left. You're staying right there. Let me see. Let's really talk about it. So all these tears that, oh, just sell. I don't buy it. At this point, I don't even think you're talking about Jock. I think you're talking about the bitch for basketball wise. You know they got the same name. Just seal, just seal. You talk about her because you can't be talking about Jock because he do the same thing every time. Okay. Now, uh, 
Amani, <laughs> Erica, and Scrappy in the meeting. And apparently, Amani have found a nigga, and her grades are going awry. Her grades are going real bad. Okay. And uh, she feels as if Amani needs to take her, needs to get her car taken away from her for her to be able to focus back on school. I'm sorry, but I can't relate to this. The reason why is because, bitch, I never had a pair buy me a car. <laughs> I've had in my lifetime four cars. The first car I had was really bad, so I had to get another one. The other car I had, I got in an accident, so I had to get another one. The other car that I had, uh, it got in a flood, so I had to get the one I have now. Like, every car that I've had, I bought myself. So it's like, I'm sorry, Buki, but, but I can't relate to you. <laughs> Not because my parents didn't take care of me, because they did a great job taking care of me. Okay? I love my parents now. Period. Okay? But they inflicted in me financial freedom. So, like, they couldn't take nothing from me because half of it I bought. Like, it's their shit. Like, I bought it. Like, they couldn't say, I'm taking this for because it's like, no, you didn't buy it. You can't take it from me. It's fine. You feel me? Like, the girls that know, no. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, the whole time watching her cry, I'm like, I didn't know how to react because, like, I can't relate. I literally cannot relate. Because <laughs> so I literally had to buy every single last car I had. It was like, sorry. Do I think a car, though, will make any changes? No. It really, I agree with her, though. It just will make her miserable. You do need a car to get around nowadays. Uber right now is expensive as a motherfucker. So, why the hell would she want to do that? Like, I just feel like it's like you, you just send her backwards. I don't feel like it's helping her really achieve anything. Okay. Uh, Amani started uh, tearing up and everything. And also, I just feel like in regards to Erica and Scrappy, them publicizing their relationship so much and Amani getting so much flack and kiki about it throughout social media. You guys want, might want to take that into account on what y'all post on social media because y'all stay going to go at her because that's both of y'all child. We know her more than we know Bambi kids. We don't see her on TV for years, okay? And that's Imani, okay? Not Amani, all right? Get it right. So next thing you know is Zell's baby mama reveal, right? So he's revealing his baby moms, and Kendra's there. Kendra ends up talking to Zell. Before that happens, Jessica's like, you need to break up with him fast. Like, what are you doing with him? Divorce him now. And I'm like, finally, somebody said it. Uh, Zell is basically checking on Jessica's like uh, mental health because the media is kind of eating her up. Because I remember when this started being put out that Jessica, you know, not Jessica, that Jock was basically, you know, finagling around with girls, got caught up with that girl all up in his face, all that type of stuff. So the media was sort of going in and it was embarrassing for her. OK, next thing you know, apparently young uh, Scrap, not Scrap, but Chaotic ends up passing out in the bathroom somewhere. I don't know what nigga was doing, yelling too fucking much, say his blood, sh blood sugar was low, some shit, okay? That's how you know you're getting up there age, nigga, okay? They had to take him to the ambulance. And then we get the confrontation of the Bambi versus uh, Carly. Apparently Bambi, <laughs> I'm sorry. The bitch ran through. I, you know what's crazy? I always had the biggest fear that this would happen to me. That I'm driving through somebody's like apartment or one of them little streets where they got the little hanger thing and the shit breaks and they fall right on my car. That's the biggest fear of mine. So I was like, new fear unlocked again. No cap. Like, that really could happen to you. So I kind of felt bad for Bambi because, bitch, that shit's embarrassing. And not even that, it's expensive as fuck. Like, they real real deal will sue your ass. That's why I be so, I be going so slow when I be going through them stuff because it's like, I don't have time for you to you know, be hitting my shit. Like, uh-uh. You try to speed through next thing, you know, that shit's that bow. Like, ooh. So apparently that was Carly's uh, their apartment. And now she owned the coin for that. All right. And she's been trying to contact the band bit. The band bit turned into a deer and she ran away. And then also she says, hey, you've been sleeping with, you've been trying to F with Kai. Now, if more than one person is saying certain things about you, Bambi, there might be a little bit true to it. I'm not going to lie. Like, that's crazy. Okay. And that makes you extremely untrustworthy. And I could furthermore believe it when you was flirting with Chaotic talking about, is it because of my thickness? Chaotic is best friends with Scrappy. What are you doing? I know y'all not together, but that's still weird to me. Like, a friend of a homeboy that you, uh, a friend of a nigga that you F, that's an op, should never be a potential flirt. 
No, that's just how I feel. But the Bambi and Scrappy, I love, I feel like they love to play that, you know, they don't like each other and stuff, but I feel like back behind the scenes, every now and then they be fucking. That's just what I think, okay? They end up uh, the show basically with them getting in the thump. Carly, you can't be fighting no more, though. You have brittle bones, okay? Them shits is going to tear. Oh, my sis. Like, no, you cannot do that, girly. I'm just saying. And the episode kind of ends uh, there, okay? Let me know what y'all think down below about this episode and where I'll be. No, personal thing. All that